a warm welcome back to Six Ashes for episode 45 with me, Mr. Sealy P. It's 11.56 in the morning here on Six Ashes. The harvest is done on the two fields that I was doing the harvest on. Uh, field two and five, I think it was. So while everyone was busy, I grabbed the telehandler, went and grabbed the fertilizer because I'm going to get both fields fertilized. I have got over 100,000 litres of wheat in storage here at the farm, at the other dairy farm. And I think I've got 27,000 litres in the trailer. There's a few jobs I need to do around the yard. I want to get this done. It's going to need cultivating because my plant is not a direct drill. And then we're going to, I'm going to try and get some seed in the floor, in the floor, in the, gr <laughs> in the ground. Uh, I'm also, I am going to cut both those two grass fields and I'm going to put into the bunker silo. So I've got quite a bit to, to be getting on with. I'm going to disconnect uh, that. We're in a kind of bit of a make do and mend because of the situation that happened with the pellets and the pelletizing. And um, we're waiting on our visa to come through for our travel. The uh, Environment Agency has been working with the Ministry of Environmental Protection and natural resources in the country that I'm going to. Um, I've also known, I think, as the Ministry of Ecology and Natural Resources. But anyway, whichever. The two ministries through the embassies are working together to uh, get the job done, which is what you need. So we're in a, you know, we're doing the, all the jobs we need to. I'll make do a men thing. I don't know if that suddenly popped into my head. I did a trip a few years ago, actually, now. Uh, when I was working at the school, and there's a place not far from us actually where we live, and it's a World War II centre. And all the people that are there are all kind of reenactors, they dress up. So when you take the kids there for a, to a day trip, it's like a. It's a whole experience, a World War II experience. And they've got classrooms set up, and they've got a museum, and they've got um, air raid shelters, and all this cool stuff. And they have all these actors, and and they have sound effects and they have a garden set up um, how it would have been during the war and all the, you know, it, it was just absolutely amazing. And um, something that fascinated me hugely at the time, I mean, I I'd love my history and that kind of thing anyway, was the, um, the make do amend thing being that, you know, you had to make do what you had because resources were scarce and, you know, so it was a case of recycling whatever you had. But you couldn't buy new, you, you know, didn't have the money to and you didn't have the resources and during World War Two, we were 90 something like 95 percent recycling during the war now it's about 45 percent that's terrifying <laughs> we, we really have become a, a disposable culture a throwaway it's it's a bit worrying, isn't it? But I don't know. You'd think with all the modern technologies and things and advances that we'd be better at it. And we are doing it more. You know, we do recycle a lot more than we ever used to, I think. But still nowhere near how it was. Anyway, yeah, I just, you know, it kind of popped into my head. I love it. I just spread so wide with this thing. It's absolutely brilliant. So, yeah, we'll get a load more of that done. Um, I, I don't know if, if anyone that's watching this... Um, I watched the um, evolution of the game video that I put out uh, over the weekend. Um, if you are, there's a couple of things I wanted to apologise for. I, I did say at the start I was going to make mistakes. I would miss things and you know, that was inevitable. There was so much information across three games. Uh, so yeah, things were going to get missed. So yeah, here in the trailer I've got uh, about 27,000 litres. The harvester is around the side. There's the workshop. I'm going to try and get it into the workshop. Actually, you know what? Let's try and do that now. Manure is still piling up massively. We'll maybe take a load of that down to set up the biogas plant. Uh, yeah, so what I was going to apologise for. One, um, I, I said that you could drive trains on 19 and not before. Because it was 17, wasn't it? Goldcrest Valley had the railway that ran around. I don't know why I just had misremembered. It was a, it was a simple mistake. I just, you know, Like I said, there was so much information. Now, I'm going to get this in here. There's a bit of a lip and we're coming up at a bit of an angle. Oh, I don't know. Oh, uh, technically not, but okay. Let's just say yes. Well, am I going to get it out again, though? 
Uh, so yeah, that was one, the trains. Uh, two? Uh, FS13 apparently was the first time that the game was on console. I honestly didn't know that. I could have sworn when I bought FS15 for PS4 that it was kind of billed as the first time on console. I... Yeah. Baffled me. Oh, okay. It's not as bad as I thought. thought we'd need more work than that. Okay, well, that's both of those done. Can I get it back out again? Um, what was the other thing as well? There was something else a few people got quite a bit annoyed about. Am I going to... Oh, yeah, kind of technically. We might just scrape the top of the hopper. Mm. No. Can I swing around there? Maybe. Right, this is going to need cleaning, but I don't have a jet wash up here. I did want to store it up here, but maybe I need to invest in a jet wash. What we'll do is we'll put this away up here. Yes, there were a couple of things, you know, and, and I did I did originally say I was going to make a mistake. I would get things wrong. Of course I would. Thank you to everyone that commented. With all, I was absolutely amazed at the amount of ideas that people came out with when I said about, you know, put it in the comments. What do you think? What do you want to see on FS? Uh, well, wherever, wherever it ends up being, 21 or whatever. And some of the ideas were just phenomenal. I, I loved, you know, there were ideas about um, a, like a storyline. Like a lot of games, you have a story mode, campaign mode. And then you have the kind of free play type thing. There was an idea to have a kind of story mode that you followed. A little bit like um, Farmer's Dynasty. Farming Dynasty, I think it was, wasn't it? Yeah. A little bit like that, which I think that's a cracking idea. Another one was um, for workers. A little bit like when you play games like a, lot, a, lot, a few of the motor racing games. Things like Formula One, where you've got teammates and stuff um, that you can get you know add to the team and you can pick from a roster of, of play of players of drivers and the drivers have different skill levels the better the skill level the more you pay them you know the, the higher their fees going to be for the year but as they race over the year depending how they do in races will depend on how their skill level increases and then how much more you have to pay them so you could hire a worker for the year that's not that great at their job at the start of the year but you haven't got to pay them as much but over the course of the year they do improve that would be a cracking idea for workers wouldn't it you've got like a pool of local workers you can go to and that's brilliant i love that as an idea i mean the whole thing being how much or of little of, of any of it could even be put into game the coding required but the thing about it is when you say that there are lots of games that already have that that are doing that kind of thing in game so it is it is doable i'm trying to wrap my brains there were so many just brilliant ideas um yeah so thank you to everyone that commented and you know a lot of people there were comments saying that's not the evolution of the game why didn't i go back to the very start and all of them well i did say on the start of the video it was mirroring my interaction with the game my what the console evolution of it more than anything else i guess was that my first iteration of the game that I played was FS15. It was far easier and I made less mistakes, I'm not saying no mistakes, less mistakes talking about all the stuff that I remembered from playing the game on the iterations that I played on from 15 through to 19. I didn't play on the previous versions. I, I could have maybe gone back, but then I, it would have been tons, 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 tons more research and I would have got more things wrong. I would have opened myself up far, far more to people than having a go at me. So it just made sense to do it from the perspective that I understood, that I knew. It, you know, um, there were a lot of people that were cross. Um, I, I thought I put it across fairly, um, in a fairly unbiased kind of way. I talked about everything that had changed in the game, good and bad. I did talk about the fact, I talked about mods, how many mods that we'd had, obviously none on 15, what we'd had on uh, console on 17, and then 19, more the maps than the mods, because obviously, uh, but thank you to Farmer Klein, who sent me a message to say how I could have worked out, I think at the moment, he said it was something like, it was over 2,000 and something mods, I'm pretty sure FS17 finished on 500 and something mods, and so far on 19, we're up to over 2,000. Was it 3,000? It's a lot. I mean, a lot of mods. Um, I did talk about seasons. I did talk about add on straw harvest. I did talk about um, 
the Grimmer pack and, and modders and you know I, I had a few people getting across to me saying that what I was saying wasn't correct and that the game hasn't evolved much and if it wasn't for the modders the game wouldn't be what it was I, I never said it wasn't I'm pretty sure I did kind of say that you know, all of these things had come to the game modders are such an integral part of everything that happens I, I you know I don't know but anyway, I just wanted to say, you know, there were a couple of things I did, you know, yeah, I got wrong, sorry. You know, I had so many notes written down, and as I was compiling my notes, I kept remembering things, and I, and I knew straight away, I'm going to miss stuff, I know I will. I don't know why I had in my head that 19 was the first time you could drive trains, and as soon as I read the comment, I thought, of course, Goldcrest Valley had, you know, on the new map on on uh, 17 had them. So anyway, yeah, weird one, but nevertheless correct so yeah thank you to everyone it, it was one of those kind of i had a i know i've mentioned it a few times i'm not i don't want to go on about it but you know the after doing the farm sim show with, with um clutch and dj and talking about you know they asked me to sort of talk briefly about my involvement in the game where it started how it started and what i've done so far it just kind of got me thinking about the game itself and what had changed and the changes I'd seen in the time that I've been playing it and it just kind of the idea developed in my head I thought you know what why not but I've, you know, let's have a look let's go back and, you know so yeah and I've also forgot yeah dogs wasn't it dogs were in uh, the dog kennel and the dog was included in 19 which we didn't have before um, so yeah, there was a few things but Right, so I'll be able to get the cultivator. I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to drive back with the class. Well, all of it's going to have to be driven back, but I'll drive back with the class, drop off the straw at the at CJ farm for feeding the chickens. I'll, did I do this bit now? I'll come back with the cultivator. This I'm going to leave up here, because when the ground's cultivated, I'm going to do an... I'm either going to see them do another fertilising state over the top, I was going to slurry, I did think about slurry and all of this, because I have got a load of slurry left, but then I thought that's going to be, um, that'll take ages, because I have to go backwards and forwards getting the slurry, it just made more sense, because I can do all of it without this running out. I'm just very conscious of the time, and that I do want to try and get the corn in the ground today, if I can, even if it means working late. I'd rather get it in the ground today rather than wait till tomorrow. Because if I can get it in a day earlier, maybe we can harvest a day earlier. But again, that's going to come down to the weather. Now, the thing I'm thinking is, at the moment, and I'll, I'll, again, let me know in the comments, what, what do you think? Is um, my trip that I'm supposed to be doing with, on behalf of the Environment Agency, whether or not to go on the trip and then come back for kind of harvest and cows and whether or not you know stuff can be run from here or whether or not to get all that done first and then go don't want to do for the best really i want to grab the mowers as well yeah so if we look in here at the moment we have got yeah wheat 101,165 litres in storage which is great. Price isn't brilliant at the moment, so I'm going to leave that for the time being. We might get a great demand or something. I don't, I'm not convinced. Uh, animals are still looking pretty good. They're all using feed now. We're up to 266 pigs. Sheep are still at 96. They're going to stop now because we're into summer. Oh, I've got all the wool to sell, haven't I? I forgot about that. That all needs to be transported and sold. So, let's hop in here. 27,327 litres. I knew it was something like that. I'm going to take this, grab the cultivator, head back up, get both the fields cultivated. Um, the the seed is going to have to come back up. It's a bit of driving backwards and forwards. My equipment machinery has got to be stored somewhere. If I store it all up here, then I've got to go... If I do any fields further south of here, I've then got to go anyway, so it just makes sense. See you back up here in a little while. Okay, the wheat is dropped off. I've grabbed the cultivator. We're heading back. I was thinking more about what I said about the make do and mend thing. It's not. 
in the traditional sense, I think going back to the, I know, sorry, it's always stuck in my mind now, the, the going back to the World War II kind of meaning of it, in that it was, you just fixed things and made do, you know, it is a kind of, uh, the, way, the reason I popped in my head was making the best of a bad situation with regards to the pellet thing, which is why it's kind of the make do bit, so making the best of it, but also the, the not wanting to waste things I think was in my head, because of, I was going to just shrug off the fact I had these three grass fields sitting here and then thought, well, no, because at the end of the day, they're here, the grass has grown. Because I'm doing seasonal work, I'm not going to ted it and make it into hay. Why waste it? I might as well mow it, I might as well collect it, put it in the bunker silo, compact it and cover it. Otherwise, the season goes through and I've got three grass fields I've wasted. And that, that it seems it seems silly to waste it I think that's more the I guess it is kind of along those lines isn't it I'm certainly not fixing anything but I'm not wasting anything I think is yeah let's go with that And let's cultivate. Yeah, so what I'll do is, I know, again, a lot of people will always ask, uh, why do I not seed and fertilise at the same time if I get a seeder? That does it. Um, it is just down to habit because of the amount of contract work I do. And again, I know, I'm, I, if you've heard me say this before, I apologise, but it's, you know, um, because I do a lot of contract work, and if you're doing sowing contracts, you don't want to seed and fertilise doing a sowing contract because you're wasting fertiliser. You're only being paid for doing the sowing. So if you put fertiliser in the ground, you gain nothing from doing that. So I kind of got into the habit of not putting fertiliser in my sowers, in my seeders, for doing contract work. And then it just became, I don't know, I, I know I'm doing it in two passes by, by doing it separately. But it just, that's kind of, it just stuck. I, yeah, I don't know. There's no rhyme or reason. There's another one of those weird things I've always found in every workplace I've ever worked in, everywhere. Um, I, I worked, when I first started working, I say working, it was an after school job working in a little warehouse down the road from the school where I worked, where I worked, where I went to school. Um, and it was, a, it was a wholesaler, like a sweet warehouse, and it supplied uh, sweet shops and little news agents, those kind of things tobacconists and we were pickers so we would, we would finish school we'd go down there and you get a pick list and you'd go around and you'd collect all the stuff up box it all up it would go onto pallets and then it would be sent off or the companies would come and collect it um, and that was kind of the first job I had then I got a job working for Asda um, that was also after school but I was a little bit older then and Asda was a little bit further away from where we lived so I used to cycle after work down there um, I had a an after I oh, plummeted loads of after school stuff I had an after school job working in a greengrocers up in a little village not far from where I live and I'd worked every day after school and all day Saturday so it was technically a Saturday job but I, I did every day after school as well in the greengrocers and funnily enough that's where I met my wife she was a Saturday girl at the greengrocers um, yeah so I had a few, a few jobs here and there, and then I got a job working for Royal Mail, I was a postman. I was a postman for 17 years, and started off as a postal cadet. They used to have a, a, you started off at, before you were 18, you could start at 17 years old, and you did like a training programme. So you worked as a postman, but you also did training, you did city and guilds courses, you did outward bound courses and all kind of sorts of stuff like that. So I started off doing that, worked my way up over 17 years, became a deputy manager and did all sorts of things there. I did deliveries, I did processing, I did night work, I did dock work, I worked on all the automated stuff, um, did that for a, lo a long time. And then they were offering redundancies. So by then I've been doing nights for nine years. I think it was yeah about nine years I've been on nights for and it was hard not so much because it was hard work it was just working nights that long long a time 
I've, I've very rarely got to see my wife. She was working long days. Um, I would sleep till middle of the afternoon because I'd been on nights. I'd get up. Uh, the kids were getting from school. I'd sort all that out. She'd get in from work. We would literally have an hour, maybe an hour or two together. And I'd go off to work. And it was like, you know, I'd sometimes sit the weekends, depending on my shifts. I would either do a, a week where I would do a Friday into Saturday morning would be my last shift. So I'd finish Saturday morning, sleep in till middle of the afternoon, Saturday. Or I did one which was a Sunday to Thursday, which was great, but it meant you went in on a Sunday night and worked through to Thursday night. But you got your Friday off, which was nice. So I did that for a long time. So when I took redundancy, I sort of decided I had a year. What shall I do, you know? Um, I knew that I had a year's worth of money and I could find a job and somebody... I was taking the kids down to school one morning and someone said, oh, they're looking for a, a, mid, a midday supervisor. What we used to call dinner ladies, but dinner ladies isn't a BC term anymore because it's not all ladies. And, you know, so would I consider coming down to be a midday supervisor? It was an hour every day just to go down there and at lunchtime be on the playground um, to make sure the kids were safe. That kind of thing. So I did that for a while. And um, and then one of the days I was down on the playground, the head and the deputy head, unbeknown to me, had come out and watched me working, you know, because I don't know who had mentioned what I was doing or whatever. And they wanted to see how I interacted with the kids and, you know, that kind of thing. Then they called me into the office. You know, it's that kind of you get called and you think, oh, no, what have I done, you know? <laughs> I haven't done anything wrong um, and asked me if I would consider being a teaching assistant because they said that you know, I had a really good rapport with the kids and my demeanour and the whole way I was you know, would I consider it which I did um, started as a teaching assistant and then I trained to be a higher level teaching assistant which meant you could then uh, it, you had to do a course and you had to fulfil a whole load of criteria which was um, to do with fold down sorry I'm, I'm i'm kind of trying to treat today's episode as more of a kind of almost like a stream in, in i'm just getting some jobs done but just chatting a little bit you know that um you had to do what was it called it was it was the hlta course it was a folder of evidence and you had a set of criteria and there were i can't remember how many different sets of criteria you had to fulfill so you had to provide evidence that you had met all of these targets and standards and then they would come in they would watch you teach a, a class they would watch you and then you would have an interview and all this sort of stuff then they would get um, the head and somebody else in the school would have to write almost like a reference for you for your your abilities with with the class you know which meant that i would then cover teachers when they were on planning time or if they were off sick you would cover, cover a class. It would only be for a session here and there. Now, it was a bit controversial at the time because you had supply teachers, and supply teachers would come in if people were off sick and that kind of thing. It was kind of... I personally think it was a clever way of schools getting around, getting supply teachers and cover teachers in. Sometimes... Their argument was sometimes the supply teachers and cover teachers weren't that great. They weren't invested in the school because they didn't know the school, they didn't know the kids. They were being paid a lot of money to come in for a day or a morning or an afternoon. And they would rather have people that were already working at school, already had a rapport with the kids and, and kind of were a bit more invested. So I can kind of sort of see both sides. I can understand why supply teachers and cover teachers were annoyed. I, I, you know, I, I really can. Obviously for me, it kind of worked out to, to my advantage. And then what they did over a period of time was they changed my contract so at one point it was only 50% the maximum you could teach over the course of a week was 50% of the week you weren't allowed to teach more than that um, and then they changed my contract to 75% of the week then it went up to 100% so it wasn't always 100% but I could cover a, cover a, all, all week across the entire school and I worked at a primary school ages 5 up to 10, 11 years old and on a lot of weeks I was teaching 75% to 100% of the week so unlike a regular teacher that would be with their class all day every day for the entire year I could be doing one lesson in year one down at you know sort of year five uh, five-year-olds next lesson I could be in year six teaching ten-year-olds after lunch I could do the whole afternoon 
you know, in the middle of the school teaching eight-year-olds, you know, all different lessons, all different subjects. And I didn't, ended up doing that for 12 years. Oh, I cannot stop sneezing today. Yeah, 12 years I did that for. Uh, taught so many different year groups, so many different classes. I did do a, a period of time where one of the teachers uh, was very ill. And they asked me if I would cover the class, almost like a long term. I did three months. For all intents and purposes, I was their class teacher. Um, school then became an academy. Uh, I went for academy status. Things changed. Things got a lot more political. And, and you know, they, you had a different set of hierarchy in the school then. You had a set of trustees as well on in between the sort of you had the, the teachers, the head, deputy head. Most schools have a board of governors. You had the governors, then you had a board of trustees as well. And then it became, for me personally, it was more about, it then became about, about cost cutting because it was that situation where because they were technically a free school, sort of separate from government control in a way, but obviously finances for all schools was, was tight. And then it just became, I don't know, I I loved teaching. The, the teaching side of things was just brilliant. I absolutely, you know, I had some of my best moments teaching and kids could be don't get me wrong they could be horrendous <laughs> if you had a bad day it could be awful but they could be so funny and the things kids would come out with were just amazing I don't know I loved every minute of it um, but then it just you know I don't know because you, I was because I was being treated like a regular teacher so I was then responsible for planning all my lessons, resourcing the lessons, you know. It was um, it was hard work, you know. My hat's off to teachers that are still doing it, that, that have done it, and I've always done it. I've always said it's, it's funny how these, these different careers, jobs, you've got teachers who are held in such high regard, um, doctors, nurses, policemen, firemen, ambulance service, soldiers, you know, or the military generally some of the hardest jobs doing the most important things and being paid so poorly <laughs> I've never understood how that works you know it, it's and also sort of demonized treated so badly you know I know over the years different things have happened and individuals have been brought to light that have brought all these different sorts of jobs into disrepute for whatever reason but that shouldn't mean that everyone gets tired with the same brush it, I don't know so yeah it got to a point and I was just I don't know I, I did it for a long time I don't know how I got into talking about all this but yeah just to kind of the history of Miss Silly B um, I should do my autobiography really shouldn't I been a weird old life yeah so I while I was doing that in the last few years I was doing that I started doing this playing farming simulator and recording it and building my channel up while I was still working at the school and uh, yeah it went a bit crazy really there probably was a reason why I started talking about this all at the very start which is now completely gone I, I honestly cannot remember for the life of me why I started talking about it but that's me so I'm going to finish this I'm going to go and grab a cedar because time is getting on it is going to start getting dark I want to get the corn in the ground I'll get the corn in the ground then I'll fertilise even if I end up fertilising in the dark I really don't mind well, I suppose I'll get the fertiliser running while I'm going to get the cedar couldn't I will it work? don't know we'll see um, and then yeah I might have to make a start on the, on the going, doing the mowing tomorrow for doing the bunker silo Is this episode full, filled with thrills and spills and exciting equipment? No. Just me. That's why you're all here, isn't it? <laughs> it's that same situation you find yourself in a lot of the time, isn't it? If you just bounce through stuff, people say, oh, you don't do enough farming. And then when you're doing stuff like this, it's like, no, oh, it was boring, all you did was cultivating. So. <laughs> Sorry. Right. Get this done, I'll go and grab a cedar. Planter.
I really must stop doing all this thinking. It's bad for you. I was thinking on my way back. I've grabbed the I've grabbed the planter. It doesn't fertilise anyway. The planter I've got, so it's kind of a moot point anyway. When I'm doing my, anything, or any of my episodes, any of what I'm doing, I'm always thinking of what you know. What am I going to call it? What's the episode going to be called? Um, there was a brilliant series I watched. What was it called? As yet untitled with Alan Davis, who's a comedian. You'd have all different comedians on, and they'd sit around a table with an audience, and they would just talk about the, their lives and stuff that was going on. And it was called As Yet Untitled, and over the course of this episode, they would come up with a title based upon things they'd talked about. And it's kind of along those lines, you know. I set out with the intention of this being called Make Do Amend. I was going to, you know, find something interesting to put up for the thumbnail. It, I suppose it's going to have to be more along the lines of <laughs> who is Mr. Silly P <laughs> from all the chat, and uh, or who am I? Well, that's a bit deep, isn't it? <laughs> It's one of those questions, isn't it? Who am I? Husband? Father? YouTuber? Content creator? Postman? Teacher? I don't know, it's a weird one, isn't it? When you start looking at those sorts of things, all the things you've done, all the things that make you who you are, you are the sum of your experiences. All the things you've experienced make you who you are. I guess I'm all those things. I did hire a worker. I, I, although, I'm not quite sure what he's doing. <laughs> should, we just, should we just take a moment? Okay. Whoa. We're fired. How. So I left him with this to do, and he has done nothing but go around in circles. I suppose I should have checked, shouldn't I? I shouldn't have assumed anything. Is that going to overlap or not? Let's turn around at the end, maybe. Fingers crossed, this worker will work better. Ah, yeah. What else? Storyteller? I guess storyteller. Uh, I have been a mentor over the years to different people. Um, what else? My old... Uh, well, the guy that was the CO at the Air Cadet Squadron where I helped out as an instructor. <laughs> he always just say, it's a thoroughly nice bloke. I'd like to think I am. But that's for other people to judge, not me. Um, don't you find it... I don't know if it's just me or not. When people say things like... There are certain things that people can say about you. Um, you know, when people say, oh, it's so-and-so, oh, they're a legend. I'm not saying I am, but someone's saying, oh, they're a legend, they're this, that. You can't call yourself that, can you? It's a bit, oh, I'm a legend. Why would you... I don't know. No, that doesn't sit right. Right, corn. Um, yeah, there are certain things. Mm, I'm trying to think. There was one. What's that series I used to watch with Alan Sugar? My wife still watches it. The Apprentice. And they would all do that little bit to camera at the start of the series, saying a bit about themselves. Oh, blimey, some of the nonsense. They were, Where is the worker going? <laughs> He's doing it again. Oh, blimey. Just... <laughs> oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. I'm not going to get anything done at this rate. So what was I saying at the start of the episode? I know what I'll do. Let's head off and go and do the work in the Ukraine and leave the farm in the capable hands. <laughs> of local workers hmm not so sure about that now oh dearie me all right let's try this again shall we can we see if we can do at least one one pass come on let's see if we can do one if i overextend a little bit there nope spot on come on let's try not to do it again the other end um 
Yeah, I can't think what it was. I'm an entrepreneur, but don't you, you call someone else an entrepreneur? Would you would you call yourself an entrepreneur? Yeah, I suppose you would if, if that's what you. Know, maybe you are being entrepreneurial. But I think the one that probably gets to me more. I know I'm, I'm on a rant now, and I'm on one of my. It's like the whole artisan thing when I did that. Was on Green? Was that on Green's Valley when I did the artisan rant? Probably. Um, it's influencer. Oh, that that drives me up the wall. Oh. I mean, let's be honest. Anybody that does anything that may persuade or influence someone to do something else, technically, you're an influencer. It could be you just suggest something. It could be you have a chat with someone and they change their opinion. You have influenced their, you know, in some way. Calling yourself an influencer, really? It's a bit much, isn't it? I just, I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, just, because I'm on that thing now. I'm in my head thinking, you know, who is Mr. Silly P? Who am I? What am I? And yeah, I would not say influence. You know, even if I have or do influence people to do anything, I would never call myself that. No. Oh. Oh, helper, educator, maybe. I don't know. I, I don't. I'm not even. Gonna, I don't want people to put anything in the comments because I don't want to know what people think of me. <laughs> I'll tell you what you are. You're a... Yeah. No, thank you. So this, again, this is... When I started off this series, this was kind of what I said, wasn't it? It was more about almost like a, a recorded stream in that I was... It was me chatting and, you know, doing a few jobs here and there. And it has kind of developed a little bit as we've gone on with various different jobs we've had to do. There's nothing wrong every now and again. Like I said when I did the uh, evolution of a game video, of just slowing down a little bit. Taking a bit of time. I'm thinking about things. Or thinking about things. Thinking about them. Thinking about things. So, my goal for this episode was get the field... So I, I'm, I'm, going to, I'm going to get out of the tractor I'm going to bang my head against one of these tree trunks this has not happened before I've set workers off all over the place around six ashes and never had this happen is it something to do is there, is there like a magnetic is there like a ley line or there's something underneath this field is it internal compass has gone to, to pieces okay I'm going to ignore him for a minute <laughs> while I finish off I hope you've enjoyed the episode uh, let me know what you think about you know should I be going off heading off now obviously not leaving the farms the farm in the capable hands of that that worker or the last couple we've had um, and then come back or do I finish off what I'm doing here and then we'll head off it's going to take a little while for the visa to come through anyway, providing that all gets sorted out. And we'll be able to get off and, and get on with what we need to do. But just, yeah, let me know. I'm just curious what the people think. Hope you've enjoyed the episode. If you have, give us a like. If you don't subscribe yet, please do. If you want to leave a comment, feel free. And if you want to share this video, then please be my guest whatever you should choose to do. Thanks for watching.